now we're going to take a look at future proofing for change in the financial industry because it's vital in order to protect clients, business and systems. But how can we do this? Certainly building on successful initiatives such as Swift GPI is key along with continued collaboration and investment in the network. For a look at the new age of cross-border payments, I'm joined by David Lynn, who's head of corporate bank at Deutsche Bank. Cash management is one of the core businesses at Deutsche Bank's corporate arm. How bullish are you on this area as with its potential for growth? Is it the place to be looking? Well, it's a key part of our corporate bank business and our philosophy to be the global house bank for all of our clients. If you think about cash management across country, currency, uh, client base, it touches every part of our global franchise and is a key component of it. It's also a key component for every other transaction banking business we do across trade finance or security services having really the best of breed payment capability as a, a backbone for that capability. Um, we see tremendous change in the industry, so the payment industry is changing fast and there's a lot of technology and innovation as you just alluded to, and we're really investing heavily into it uh, uh, to be a really leading player for our clients in every element of solution that they would require. Uh, the payment volume in the world will continue to go up. Um, the market share is a definitive thing we're trying to go after. And if you think of areas like the, the, the great global move towards online e-commerce, that's a huge driver of global payment requirements as people you know, consume off a global marketplace. So uh, we're very bullish on the, on the sector. Uh, we think it's key to our overall corporate bank. And, and there's significant change and interesting things that can be done. OK, so the look ahead is positive. Let me read you some remarks. I, I have to stress they don't come from me, so I'm just simply quoting unnamed individuals. But the cross-border payments industry, often described as outdated, slow, costly and non-transparent. Is that fair? I think that would have been somewhat a fair reflection maybe five years ago, but clearly the industry is changing fast. You alluded to Swift GPI, which has been a game changer in terms of connectivity, uh, technology capability. The introduction of end-to-end -end reference processing uh, and unique identifiers uh, ho housed on cloud-based technology has really been a game changer for the industry. So we can track every payment and we can see where it's got stuck or not and stuck. And in real time. And in real time. So those things really are uh, changed the industry. At the same time, there's clearly a lot of um, non-bank providers coming into the space that uh, clearly keeps the industry on its toes. Uh, we think that is positive, right? I think. Um, any pressure from outside that changes your capabilities and changes that perception of the, the payments industry being sort of a, a sleepy old mm, club, thinking, yeah. club uh, <laughs> is an excellent thing. Okay, so an unfair judgment because things have moved on. Given that, what's your take on ISO 20022? Is it really that big a game changer? Because I've had quite a few people coming into this studio. It has cropped up in conversation and they're very excited by it. Um, yes, we believe strongly it'll be a game changer. Um, definitely the key market infrastructures, whether that's the Eurosystem, the Fed, Chips Payment Wire, the Bank of England, and multiple other countries across the world over the next three years will move to this format. Our industry still has a lot of wrong messaging, so things need to be reconciled, back offices need to work on uh, fixing things post facto. Uh, definitely the movement on, under the ISO standard to a rich data and consistent data format will mean we're much more accurate in making payments. Uh, we're much more controlled. And honestly, the, the very big aspect of it will help our real AML and transaction monitoring downstream that we have a very consistent data set to really process our responsibilities and very um, <clears throat> important responsibilities around that space. So. Yes, we're investing heavily in that transition. We're a big supporter of it, and we think it'll be one of the next game changers for the industry and high value payments. Okay, when you take the overall picture, okay, how important do you see collaboration in the cross-border payments space? Is this collaboration, given everything that's happening, inevitable? I think it's um, critical, right? It is probably, if you think of, of the world, one of the biggest global ecosystems in the world is like the financial payment space, right? So unless every bank in every country and increasingly non-bank non financial providers are linked together in that inco structure, it doesn't work, right? So fundamentally, we are as good and strong as the collective capability, right? Clearly, SWIFT has paid a, a critical component out of multiple years in collaborating that ecostructure together, right? Mm. Are we going to um, see more collaboration? 
Um, yes, in, and then maybe in different ways. So that as we, you know, as we go into different payment methods and different things, then we'll need different types of collaboration. But the industry is as strong as the number of people in it. We clearly all compete, but fundamentally for it to work on a global scale, you know, it all needs to be joined together. Mm. I mean, there have been a number of discussions here at Cybos, and they've been looking at the interlinking of instant payment systems across borders. In other words, seamlessness, one of the big buzzwords. Is that the model of the future when we talk about cross-border payments? So the instant payment pace has really grown so far, and in a lot of countries, really as a domestic piece, right? And it's extremely useful. For, as a personal user in Singapore, I can pay all of my bills, pay all of my sort of small SME providers. They all have a, a unique identifier number. I can do that all from my mobile phone. So no need for checks anymore, no need for going to the bank. Sorry, Literally, what are checks? Yeah, Can you exactly. remind me? So, <laughs> pieces of paper that fly around. So I can literally pay everything, right? To date, most of that has been within the domestic system, right? So clearly, Europe and US are working heavily uh, across you know, the payment systems, the European banking system, and the banks to create the cross-border capability between the US and uh, Europe. Uh, proof of concept has been already finalized in 2021. And then they will link those different payment systems. Uh, similarly, to give you an Asia example, Singapore is linked to Thailand. So if mm. I want to make an instant payment into Thailand, I can again do that from my mobile phone. So the next stage of those instant payments uh, processes will be linking those systems together. So we go back to what we said at the beginning, there will be multiple payment systems in the world. Um, those will satisfy certain requirements in domestic space or consumers or businesses. And then increasingly just linking those together in an efficient fashion uh, will be the future of this industry. OK, let me throw a, a, a cat amongst the pigeons here because, you know, we've been talking about this and you cannot exclude digital currencies. Mm -hmm. Certainly when we look, about, look at the potential of the concept, I mean, do you see it perhaps being used as a means of improving cross-border payments or is it the technology that can really make the difference? So this will be the next stage of the evolution of... The actual the, currency or the technology? Broad, well, broadly the financial system. So we would think of that as tokenization a little bit more. And central bank digital currencies are just a subset of tokenization. Clearly, we have cryptocurrencies. We increasingly will have tokenization of securities and assets. Right? Um, this will allow 24-7 you know, instant settlement. And the blockchain really is an immutable golden source of information, right? So today we are reconciling things where everybody on a blockchain system will be able to see all the information at the same time, right? Um, but the evolution will be important that the cost of our industry in processing cross-border payments does also relate to our AML, our cross-border checks, our sanctions and embargoes. So as the central banks uh, develop central bank digital currencies, which clearly a lot are mm. looking at. And again, in China, we already have the first example. And in India, we will have one in the next uh, six months or so. Thinking about the cost structure and the process around the reconciliation, but particularly the transaction monitoring and things as part of that ecostructure will be key. But the world moving to a more distributed ledger process mm. has tremendous uh, applicability in terms of cost in terms of instant settlement, which means we reduce capital and settlement risk, right, and these things, uh, and everybody working off the same uh, source of information, which is the big advantage of the blockchain. So much is happening, and I can't keep up, but at least you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, uh, there's things now, and there's things for the future, so we need to constantly, in our business, think of the things that are applying now, yeah. so uh, setting ourselves up for ISO sure. 2022 uh, in the US, in Europe, in, in the coming months, through to thinking about how we build instant payments, thinking about really what the future future looks like, which is across both the payment but also the security settlement world in terms of the blockchain. Yeah. Well, either which way, it's looking good. David Lynn, thank you so much thank for joining you. us here on Cybos TV. We'll see you next year, hopefully.